Hey guys, welcome to your 7th C Sharp tutorial. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about control structures. Control structures are used all the time, and if you really need to, if you think you need to, watch this video again when I'm done because um, it will only help you to watch it again. Um, getting the control structures down is really important in everything you do. If you can master control structures, then your programs will become more dynamic and exciting. Um, there are two main types of control structures, and the first one is a selection selection control structure, and the second one is a repetition or iteration control structure, also known as loops. Um, it's kind of layman's term. The real the technical term is iteration, but a lot of people go with repetition because it's more um, explanatory. Um, uh, the different types of selection are one-way, two-way, and multi-way. It's kind of self-explanatory one-way. There's only one way to go. Two-way, there's two ways you can go. And multi-way, there's more than one way to go. And then repetition and iteration have precondition, postcondition, fixed, and array loops. I'm only going to be teaching you the first three today because array loops, you really need to know what arrays are before you can do an array loop. Obviously, so I'm not really going to talk about that. I just want to show it to you so that you can know that there actually is such a thing as an array loop right now. Um, and post condition and precondition loops are um, very important as well. And it's not, the name isn't quite as self explanatory, so it's going to need a little bit more explanation. So I might have to do that in a totally different video, even. Um, so let's get started with selection at least. Um, one way selection, again, is when you only have one option. And now you're probably looking at me right now and you're like, why are you typing x equals equals 5? Well, that's because, um, oh, I'm sorry, I can't talk and type at the same time. Okay, I typed x equals equals 5 because equals equals is a boolean algebra, um, a Boolean algebra statement. Whatever you want to compare two things and see if they're equal, you use equals equals because the single equal sign is actually an assignment operator which assigns a value to something. The equals equals operator is um, a comparative operator. It compares two things. So when you want to compare two things, use equals equals. When you want to assign a value to a variable, you use just single equals. So let's go ahead and print this out, and it says 5 because x does indeed uh, five equal 5. Now if I were to make this 6, then it's not going to print out anything at all. It's just blank. It's waiting for me to hit the enter button because it didn't print anything out. So that's one-way selection for you. Um, Two-way selection is the same thing, but you use the else statement. So it's saying if x equals 5, print out x. Otherwise, which is the else part, the otherwise, print out x does not equal 5. And whenever you want to say the word not or does not equal, you just put exclamation point equals. It just means the same. It's mean not equal. It's like putting an equal sign with a slash through it in your math class, but we don't have an equal sign with a slash through it, so we have to use the equals. Um, explanation point equals, sorry, for that. And let's go ahead and run this, and it should say x explanation point equals 5, or x does not equal 5. And it does, so we're good. Now, if you want to do like more than one thing, like if I did console.writeLineX because I wanted it to, oh, I got caps lock on, because um, I wanted it to type it out twice, this is incorrect. It will. Um, not type it out twice because see it's giving me an error now because it's like if x equals equals 5 console dot right line x well after it's done with that console dot right line x it's like okay that's the end of the if statement now we're just gonna type this out so this should actually be over here because that's actually part of code that is not in the if statement so if I wanted that to be in my if statement I would actually have to come down here put a curly brace 
and then put a closing curly brace there, and now it works because it want, I, I'm telling it to print it out twice. So, and you have to do that with every single kind of loop if you want it to do more than one line of code, because it only does the following line unless it's inside of curly braces. So there's that. Um, next is multi-way. Multi-way is fun. Let's do int x equals 2. 2. Okay, and so then we do switch x. Now for switch, you need to put it inside of curly braces, otherwise it's not going to work right. And let's do our console.readline, because I accidentally deleted that. Console.readline. Um, okay, so then you use case. 1, case, case with lowercase, 2, case, 3, okay, that's enough. Let's do console.writeline x equals equals 2. Three. I'm sorry. Okay. And it's giving me an error because I need a break statement or the break keyword. Break. Um, if you know Java, then you know that in a switch case you don't need the break statement. But in C plus C sharp, you definitely need a break statement. you have to have a break statement otherwise it won't work unless I were to come up here and do like case shoot, case zero and then put no lines of code after that it works fine like this um, and you should always put a default statement in your switch case because if you are doing like user input or something and someone puts in a bad number, then you can say, okay, that's an invalid number, try again, and then you can actually come in here and put a go to statement, go to whatever, like begin, and then put that, and then come up here and have a begin thing like that, and it'll go up there, but that's something I may have to talk about later. Actually, no, I'll talk about that now. Okay, so if you want it to go to begin, like a lot of times in in old programming, which wasn't called, it was like, um, there are different stages of programming design in the past. Um, there was like spaghetti programming, which would, had no structure at all, and it was very difficult to debug it. And then there was even something before that where basically all the lines of code were in one big block and they never put, like, you'd have int y equals 3 here, int z equals 4, and they were all on the same line and jumbled together and you'd never be able to tell what was going on unless you actually went individually and figured out what was going on. But now we have, like, structured programming where you line up your curly braces and everything's indented and... It's nice and neat and easy to read and debug. And so now we have, and there, and during one of those periods, ev there was millions of go-to statements all over the place, because people people would get halfway through writing their program and be like, "Oh no, I need it to go back here, but I don't want to have to retype my code." So then they would just say, "Go to whatever." But and now you can actually name portions of your code, like begin and you just type up here, go begin, and then add a colon after it, and that's how you denote that. If there's no colon, it gives you an error. If there is a colon, it does not. So that's how that works. And then the break statement. Let's say that x equals 1. In other programming languages, like Java especially, um, if it would go, say, x equals 1, it would say, okay, case 1. Okay, x does equal 1, so let's print out console.writeline x equals 1. And then if there's no break, it goes to the next one and does it automatically. So then it would say x equals 2. And then it would say x equals 3. And then it would even give the default. So. And so then you have to have the break. But in C sharp, it doesn't even let you not have a break. See, it gives me an error statement now, an error now, because I don't have a break statement. So. So that's kind of nifty that it doesn't let it won't let you not have a break. 
or a go-to at least. So let's run this. And it says x equals equals 2 because x does equal 2 and it went to case 2. There you go. And it didn't print out the rest of this because there are break statements here. Now let's see if I put in x equals 5. Actually, I should not do that because that would put me in an endless loop and that would screw me up. Let's not do that. Okay. And then it says x equals 3. Because x does equal 3, case 3, x equals 3. Okay. Um, I'm trying to limit the size of my videos because um, the file type that it creates is an AVI and those files are ginormous and trying to upload them to YouTube takes hours literally. The last one I just did with one that I uploaded was the Hello World one and it was a, over a thousand megabytes, almost a gigabyte and it took like two hours for it to upload and I need to limit my video length because it makes AVIs so I'm not gonna make anything longer than like seven or eight minutes if I possibly can help it so I'm gonna talk about repetition slash iteration slash loops in the next tutorial I will see you guys then